Okay, guys. Uh, this is the piece of root I have. As you can see, that's where I took the end off uh, the last pipe. Um, so what I'm now going to do is try and do this one-handed. Uh, I need to take off. I normally have about four centimeters, which will give me a good start, and then. I'll come back and work out the positioning I want my pipe and I'll be on it in a minute. As I said before in a previous video, um, I make these little templates which are the sort of designs I use the most. And the designs can actually be adapted as you're actually working but I find that this just gives me a good starting point as to which I want to do. Um, this is the one we're going to be centering on today which is the one that I used for the pipe I made and put on Facebook. Um, and what I have done is I've taken the liberty of really transferring the, the design itself to a block of wood. Hopefully trying to avoid as many of the uh, horrible bits as possible and some likely disappear in the actual making of the pipe so with that now transferred onto there I now know exactly where the chamber is going to be and I normally do mine at a 20 millimeter diameter chamber and I start off with a 4 mil draw hole going down to 3.8 millimeter just to enter the chamber. Just a little thing that I do, but it seems to give it a much better draw on the smoke without getting a mouthful of tobacco. Um, so now I need to take off this end and just give myself a surface to work across from there, which will also allow me to put the square on and work out the center points, which will be on here and on the other end for the draw hole. So, over to the bandsaw, and I'll get that done. As you can see, uh, top off, more or less in line with the, the bowl itself. Back end off, more or less in line with the end of the shank. And I've transferred my marks here, which is the centre of the bowl, and the centre of the shank to get the draw hole and what I'll do is I use an old square and I don't know if you can actually make it out just here a little mark now that is set is exactly two centimetre which is one of the reasons why my block I normally start off at four centimetre and that way as long as I'm straight at least on one side take all my measurements from that one side and there we go so for the bowl or the tobacco chamber I'll take the measurements from this side and I can do this one handed and for the draw hole from the same side that way you're guaranteed that it's the, right, it's the same distance either side and then obviously once it's chucked up onto the lathe um, you can centre it easier uh, using these marks which if you excuse my uh, homemade jaws here but I, I've used them just about on every pipe that I've done since I first found out about this style of jaws um, on here if I can actually get the camera to pick it up not very easily but just here in the centre you see there's a slight groove I've cut and there's another one to match on this side and they actually mark <coughs> the very centre line of the inside of the chuck here so I know that if I was to draw across that I'll go right down through the centre of the shaft to the lathe and then what I do is those then get lined up with this like that and then the hole here will get lined up with the quilt on the head uh, tailstock 
and then I know that I've got a straight line and I can begin to turn sorry about the camera work, uh, begin to turn this colour here just down rough and I normally like to start with the shank so time's already getting on I had to I had another appointment this afternoon so I've not managed to get down here today um, but I just want to make a start and get that bit organised and then we'll get back here tomorrow and look forward to start turning it and hopefully we should end up with a cool looking pipe at the end see you tomorrow okay we're back I've got me a bit of wood chucked up as you can see with the line uh, there it is Mark when we set the spot there and then the hole which I made at the other end is lined up with the quilt and it is now Seventeen. Uh, that's midday, and I think it's about time I put the camera on a tripod. I'm going to start to get this little puppy going. Be right back. Okay, right. I've set up uh, my Jacob's chuck with um, forcing a bit, and I'll basically just use forcing a bit to give myself a flat surface here for the actual. Um, Drilling out makes it a lot easier, otherwise you end up with a wobble like that and pff, that's not a lot good. Right, let's start her up. Basically, just giving me um, a flat edge on the front, so that then that way the drill enter much easier without wobbling. Nice oh, easy. Trying to work around this tripod. Okay, so we've finished. With the forcing for now. Take that off of that. <coughs> and the next one is my four mil. One thing that we do want to take note of at this point is where the um, draw hole is actually going to enter the tobacco chamber. Uh, I'll measure 10 from there because overall it will be 20 for the inside. Which means that, that will arrive just about on there. I don't particularly want to go all the way in with the 4 mil because I like to use me 3.8 and to the end a bit easier to the end of that works out so it's 4.4 .4. so if we say 4 centimetre and that gives the extra last 4 for 3.8 so a little bit masking tape just on the end of the drill bit to mark the four Yeah. 
Now, that way I know I'm not going to go deeper than I actually want to go. I'm avoiding everything's, I'm hoping, we should be able to get a pretty decent ball hole. piece of tape starts flapping I'll know that I'm at that four centimetre mark because I took the mark from the outer edge of the wood and not from the flattened area Drill bits are nothing special, they're just straight out of any DIY store. Right, so now we're going to want a complete measurement, which we said was 4.5. I'm going to allow this extra cut of mill, so 4.7 was the last one I used for. On the grounds I've already got a piece of tape on this, I can just basically um, put a pencil line on it so that I'll know from that. So, go back in, as you can see, not much left up from the pencil line, so I'll just put it back in the middle of down to do the chamber later that should connect right as you can see we do happen to have a little bit of nasty wood just there so what I'm going to do is turn off the camera for a short bit I'm just going to try and take that back to some decent wood and then we're going to start working out what stem collars etc etc we're going to want from after that so i'm just going to try and get that nasty bit off and i'll be back mm. well i've taken the nasty bit off as you can see i just basically turned it as you would do any other turning uh, but now it's time i worked out the point time I worked out what stem and collars etc I want to use so I'm going to go fetch those and we'll have a look together okay well I've looked out my box of various stems that I've collected up over the time uh, most of mine are second hand are just ones that have been for sale on various ebays and the likes on the grounds that we're doing a curved pipe, I've got my curved selection out. Uh, this one is the same design as the one on the last pipe, so I might go with that one. Uh, like I say, a lot of these are second hand, it's a gene tech. But it won't matter because once I've cleaned them all up and de scratched them and clean them with alcohol etc I'm just as good as new not like I'm trying to resell these as an original or something um, and what I do is I'm trying to line up a stem and look at your pipe like that it'd 
don't sort of really work that well. So I actually used the template. And then like that. That's me colours, we'll get to those in a minute. Then like that, I can well, look like that and see what I think. Mm, maybe, I'm not sure. That's the same as the last time, so yeah, that's a strong possibility. Uh, I've got an antler. Mm. You can change the direction for the actual the stem too while you actually got it all on the lathe. Um, but that's, that's just the thing. It's all um, it's down to the, the person doing it, whatever you fancy. I like curved pipes, so. Uh, I'm probably going to stick with the same as my last one and I've got a couple of types of collar these ones are a little bit deeper than these they're all pretty much the same thing a little shallow one which came off an old pipe and I was supposed to be restoring but the pipe was all broke wasn't worth it so I kept that bit um, so yeah I'll select one and we'll work it all out. Okay, I've decided to opt for the deep collar, which is uh, quite a nice colour as well. It's different from the last one. The last time I used silver. I never liked any of my pipes to be too similar. And I'm going to use a similar style stem. Uh, so now I need to work out the size of the tenant which is simply done with a drill bit gouge gauge whatever you want to call it and I'll just go along until I find one that fits so it says it's a nine so I'm gonna do that at an eight point five. I can always take wood off, can't put it back on easy. So eight point five um, so it like that, i take this off the tripod, hopefully, there we go, right, now, yeah. I've tried lining it up to give myself a rough idea, where are we, yeah. to give myself a rough idea as to how the pipe will look and uh, I wasn't quite keen on it so I'm going to need to bring it like that a little more so in order to do that I just need to re-angle this this bit here and I'm just going to bring it slightly over this way but still keep this dead centre because otherwise when it comes to the actual drilling um, the two holes are not going to meet and you, you're not going to suck no air or smoke. So I'm just going to readjust that and then we'll come back and do a bit of drilling. Alright, well I've adjusted it. As you can see, not by very much. Doesn't take a lot. And I kept the centre point by using the quill. <coughs> so now, I just need to change Rotating the head and Jacob's chuck with my 8.5, which I've pre marked because it's still marked from the last pipe I did. And that, where are we? There. That then gets me to the right depth for that. So I'm going to get this drilled and then I'm going to start turning the shank a little. Um, I don't actually turn all the shank as it is on the lathe. I only start the shank. Um, so I'm going to start getting on with this, otherwise it's going to take all day. And then, well, I'll come back to you before I have to work on the next bit. Okay, so now I've got the shank drilled. And I'll turn it down so the colour almost fits but not quite, if we actually take that off you'll actually see in there we still have a slight gap 
and I'll leave that for a reason because at the end um, what I will do is actually heat up this collar which will then slightly expand wedge it on and then as it cools it will shrink so no glues required to actually hold that on um, you notice slightly indentated where are we there slightly indentated there that's just to help me so I haven't got quite as much uh, sand off on this bit here but you notice I have a line so that when I'm turning from this direction I can cut in and I know not to go any further than that line otherwise I'll start to touch the bowl and that's a no-no <laughs> not a good one at all right so it's just a case of a little bit of sand in here now um, with that a uh, bit of sanding on here and then I'm going to turn the whole thing around and start turning this and drilling in for the bowl ok back from short tea break um, well, I've now turned it around and got it all lined up etc exactly the same way as we did for turning the shank using the line plus the rotative um, uh, point and this is what I use to drill the tobacco chamber it's just basically a modified spade bit um, I've sharpened up this edge and same again on the other side on the opposite side rounded off the front which gives me the bottom of the tobacco chamber and I've also taken the measurement where the hole meets the, the chamber and I've measured that right up to the edge of the wood here which is 3.5 again marked it with tape and on this particular pipe it just so happens that 3.5 is exactly where the tape starts so that's fine these are from other pipes that I've made different depths uh, so I'm going to drill it out and make a start at turning the um, the actual top of the tobacco chamber tobacco chamber sorry uh, the pipe bowl and we'll come back at that point okay drilled well, I've started to shape the top of the bowl and we did meet So take it off of the chuck. I'll do this one handed. And now up to the bandsaw to remove the excess from around here before we start the actual sanding and the rest of the shaping. Okay, so we've been to the bandsaw and this is what we get and you notice as well I've drawn a set of lines through the centre and I'll do that because it's a bit like a mathematics equation what you do to one side you do to the other and just keeping the line in the middle there just gives you a marker point so you know and don't get one side that's more than the other um, also just do a I can pick it up just to get there. Do one halfway up on the opposite side for exactly the same reason. Um, so now it's on to the sanding and shaping. And this is what I use for that. It's just a flap drill on the end of my drill. The drill's mounted to the bench or one of the benches in this holder. And it's just a case of work it to get the necessary shape so I'm going to crack on with that and we'll come back when we get to the next bit okay most of the rough shaping as you can see is done and I'll put the whole thing together just to have a little look see make sure it's been still fits not too bad 
yeah so far so good so the next thing I need to do now is remove this shoulder from across there and what I use for that is one of these little sanding drum sanders on the end of my flexi rotary tool and that gets in there quite nicely and gives a nice curved finish and allows you plenty of access for actually um, uh, taking away the, the surplus material and then once I've done that it'll be a case of onto this little thing I call it a dolly it's just a one by one um, piece of scrap timber that I've just turned um, it starts off at 18 millimeters and goes up to 25 eventually um, and then that sits on there quite snug and that allows me to get in there with my sandpaper get everything all smooth and sanded down so I'll do that and we'll have a look at it once it's all sanded back Right, there it is. That's the last coat of lacquer gone on. I'm literally just waiting for it to dry. It's a fairly heat proof lacquer, so it actually works rather well for this. Um, once the lacquer's dried, I'll give it all a buff up. It's uh, two coats of beeswax, very thin coats, then a coat of lacquer, and then I knock that back with. 1000 wet and dry and a second coat and that's it drying now I'll take some photos at the end 